other positive things that you appreciate in life after graduation? Meaning you really focus on the challenges. Yeah. Are there some things that they can look forward to um, as well? Making money. <laughs> <laughs> that is a plus. Uh, making money. Um, Traveling ever since I've been working, I travel a ton. So once a year, I make a goal of mine to go somewhere I've never been. Um, and last summer, actually, I went back to France. I'm like originally from France, and I haven't been back in 16 years. So um, I went back for uh, a month, a month, and that was refreshing. And um, so I think that's the best part of uh, life at college is making money and be able to buy things you want and be able to do things you want. And uh, for me, I'm big on traveling, so I travel all the time. So you wouldn't be able to do that as a poor college student, you know? So that's a plus. <laughs> um, you know, my transition was really uh, short. You know, right after I graduated, maybe two weeks later, I started working full time, two years straight. And then two weeks before I started grad school was when my last day of work. So I literally had two weeks from undergrad to work, and then two weeks from professional work to grad school. So I didn't have a lot of time for myself, like in between. And I think that was one of my regrets. I should have, you know, waited a little bit longer, um, just so I can have more time for myself, so I could just, you know, kind of figure things out. Um, but that was, when, when, I, when I look back, it's like, you know, I should have just, you know, maybe I waited a month before I started work, or, you know, maybe I should have, you know, maybe taken that summer off before I started grad school, because it was um, stressful. <laughs> You know, trying to wrap up like your work and then starting something completely new. Um, but I think uh, something positive that came out of it was, like what I said, you know, yeah, you know, the money's nice, um, but I gained a lot of skills too as a working professional. And I worked here on campus and I networked with a lot of people, you know, with um, my colleagues, with, you know, directors, with deans, you know, they get to know you and you get to know them. And I think because I was in the at the university, I was always surrounded by, you know, students. I think that really motivated me to go back to school too. Like I knew in the back of my mind that I was going to go back, um, but I think a lot of a lot of my friends were like, you know, Zuri, if you're going to take a year or two off, you're never going to back to grad. You're never going to go back to school. And I'm just like, no, I am. Like seriously, and they like did not believe me. They're just like, no, college students should just you know finish undergrad and then go straight to school. You know, and I'm just like, I'm going to work, get some experience first, and then go to school. And that's I think. Uh, from my opinion, I think grad school would much rather have students get done, work for a little bit, get some experience, and then go to school. Because your your experience in grad school would be just so that that much better. Um, and th from what I've seen, because some like, a lot of my colleagues have, you know, they're like my age, a little bit older. Um, they've had a lot of experience. They bring so much to the classroom. Um, and I, I I do know a few of my colleagues who just graduated last spring and started, and they don't talk a lot. Like I'm my, my cohort's really small, so all we do is discuss, talk about our experiences, talk about all these different things, and they don't talk a lot because they don't have they don't have the experience and they aren't as maybe assertive or as, as confident. Because I, I I was really shy too when I was undergrad, and then that two years when I was working, you know I you know learned so much and became so much more confident, and you know you just you learn all these different skills as a working professional, and then transitioning to grad school having that you know I was a completely different person going to grad school, like I, I knew I should be here, I knew you know, why, what I wanted to do, why I was there, um, and so if you know, if your friends say, you know, you know if you, you're not going to go back to school, if you take a couple years off, you know, go and prove them wrong, because you know, I sure did, and you know, I'm back in school, and you know, so I think it's just, you know, you just have to, you know, be focused, and you listen to yourself, because um, you know, you know yourself best. Well, I guess I'm not going to lie, right when I graduated, I was really, I think I was, I was a little afraid of the unknown. I, I was so used to having things, class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, having my work day set for Tuesday and Thursday, and then, of course, um, a wedding or a funeral on uh, Saturday or Sunday. But after I graduated, I, I really didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, I was a, I was in the process for applying for tons of different jobs, and job market kind of fell down when I just graduated. So it was tough. I mean, I'll admit it was it was extremely tough. Um, but you know, throughout all, throughout all of that, I was able to find a job at Regents Hospital, and this is what my work week looks like: <laughs> work, 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 work. 
and you can handle that. I mean, this, that's what we're all going through right now is we're working. And you gotta really understand why you wanted to work. And the reason why I worked, I chose to work, was to gain the experience that I need in order to get into grad school. Um, it's imperative um, for me to understand uh, what some of the therapists do um, uh, in their work field, in their workforce, um, so that I can build a, bit, a greater understanding of what I wanted to do and sort of solidify what, I, what plans I want to make or what plans I want to pursue in the future. So, uh, besides from making money and being able to pay off some student debt, uh, some student loans, um, I have gained a lot of experience uh, throughout the one and a half years that I've been there. Um, just with being able to work with patients, um, being to be a little more personable with the uh, physical therapists, and um, uh, getting really great recommendations. I mean, I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. I learned a lot. Um, some people submitted questions at the end of our session last week, so I want to make sure to get through a few of those. Um, last week, our conversation was interviewing and, and cultural differences that might come up in interviewing. So um, some people asked the questions about um, how did your interviews go? Were there cultural differences that you had to work through? Or did that impact your confidence? Can you talk a little bit about the job interview process that you experienced um, as you were applying and, and going through job search? Um, I hate interviews, like, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it definitely, it gives you a rush, like, once you kind of go through it, like, it was really good. I mean, I've had, I think, um, and I guess my situation is a little bit different. I knew, like, like, graduating from high school that I wanted to work for Admission Possible, so, like, five years, like, at the U, I still want to work with Admission Possible, so, um, that was like the one position I applied for. Wasn't gonna apply for anything else, and then I was like, okay, maybe I should apply for other places. So um, I applied, I had, I only had two interviews. Um, so one with Admission Possible, and I had another interview, because those are the only ones I applied to. Um, so, I mean, and there were, um, the one with Admission Possible, because they're really, because um, it's, it's a nonprofit, they're really different with their um, interview, interviewing, but I mean, um, and, and I'm like, I'm always a nervous wreck. Sometimes I think I'm socially awkward. Um, <laughs> but you know, but I think once you're there, like the one thing that I kind of learned like um, at Carlson too is, um, you know, like the, the most important thing that you're ever gonna sell in life is yourself, you know? And that's like the one thing I really, well, okay, it's not the one thing, but you know, that's something that I brought with me like when I went to interviews like you know like I'm here now like they obviously saw something on my resume that they liked so you know like um, I'm here to sell myself to this organization or this company um, and I think like culturally um, I didn't if, like I didn't feel any like like cultural like barriers like when I was doing my interviews um, I applied to both organizations um, two organizations that really, you know, like they focused on working with um, minorities. And so, you know, like what I brought to the table, they, they really enjoyed, they like loved what I had to say about what I knew about working with like minorities and stuff. So um, it wasn't a big deal. Um, I don't know, I mean, I think when once you kind of start, you always have jitters, but like once you start talking about yourself, and you know, and like really practice talking about yourself. Like, I told my coworker, I was like, I'm going to a panel, I'm going to have so much fun because I love to talk about myself. <laughs> and so, you know, and that's what, you know, like when you go to an interview, like you talk about yourself, you know, you talk about your experiences in life and your experiences in school and with your past jobs. And you know, like you obviously like have done something good, like in your, in your four or five years um, in college or, you know, in your life, you know, like there's always something that um, that you could always highlight on. And I think something like one of my problem is, like what my um, supervisor told me is like, you know, like like I could be really modest, like, you know, I do a lot of things and when like people ask me what I do, I was like, I don't know, I just kind of work and stuff, you know, but like, like, you know, really like highlight like the little things that you do because like that really, like if you could really talk with passion about what you've done, um, either, you know, if it's with volunteering work or, you know, but I talked about, like, when I did my interview, I talked about working with, like, in my class project and how, you know, like, I was at Carlson, so I was, like, 
um, the only like Asian girl in like a group of like you know like um, white people. <laughs> um, so you know, and so you know, and so like I. Um, and we had a like diversity project, and I really talked about that, you know. And I really was like, you know, like it was odd at first, but then, and I talked about my struggles in class and how I, like, overcame that. And you know, and like when you do that in an interview, like they really like it. They really, like, once you could talk about something you were, like, that something that you overcame, like, you know, like employers they love hearing that because when they could see that, you know, like you've done something like out of your element or something you felt uncomfortable about, um, they know that, you know, like if you're working with them, then um, if you were ever to struggle, then they know that you could overcome that because that's just the type of person you are. So yeah. Sorry, it's kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, when I, went, when I went to Target, the, the interview process was a little different than the other jobs I had. Um, but during my time at Target, I've learned a lot. And then Target really trains you um, on how to interview. They do tons of mark, mock interview, which is you sit down with a, um, a supervisor, not your own, but another supervisor, and really uh, do uh, a run through of your interview skills. Um, so having that practice, I would say interview, interview, interview. If you're not comfortable, um, video, video tape yourself, because you, you'll notice yourself doing little weird hand gesture. You're like, okay, why do I do that? You don't know. Um, but pay attention to those things. Um, practice makes perfect. Um, for me, I think that before I started work at Target, I didn't really understand how important that culture aspect was. But after being at Target for four years, um, when I do interviews, I just had one yesterday actually uh, with the consulting firm. And when it was, when, after they were done asking the questions, one of the questions I asked them is, um, tell me about your culture. Tell, tell me about your company's culture. And I think one piece is that you really have to know who you are. You have to understand the kind of environment you uh, want to work with, uh, in, the kind of person you are, and how you're going to excel. So I knew that I wanted to work in a place that was diverse. I knew that I wanted to work in a place that was flexible with their schedule, that would allow me to work from home. Uh, so that cultural aspect, it's not so much, okay, I'm home, or uh, I'm a female, and this and that, but you, once you know who you are, and you know the kind of environment you excel in, you start to pick that up, and you start to, just like they interview you, you interview them. You want to know if you're gonna, if you go into that company or that organization, are you gonna excel? Because the, uh, the culture fit is there. Um, so I think that's one piece that I took away from my experience at Target. The way I look at Target was like, oh, it was a very, it was a, a good experience, and I grew a lot, and it, it made me smarter. It made me smarter on where I want to work and the kind of employer I really want to um, uh, be in, so that I can sell to my full potential. So I think we we'll go back to your question about that culture piece. It's very, it's one of, it's so important, and I'm surprised that a lot of people um, put more emphasis on it. But the the way you're gonna excel is that you you end up in a company or an organization that you fit in well. <laughs>